Hello on the full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a confirmation and an actual picture of the mysterious ring of Venus. Well, okay, it's not really mysterious, but there are some mysteries in regards to it. And specifically, it's this ring right here that we discussed um, approximately a couple of years ago, when the scientists using different telescopes identified the presence of this unusual ring, and here we're just talking about dust ring, present in the orbit of Venus, but also present in the orbit of Mercury, and actually also present in the orbit of Earth as well. In other words, pretty much all planets we believe have these rings, whose origin is not really well understood. Although generally we can assume that their origin is related to the presence of interplanetary dust. But where this dust comes from and what exactly makes it form is of course another question. Now not so long ago I made a video talking more about what's known as the zodiacal light. Which is this beautiful shine that you usually see right before dawn in certain locations on the planet at certain time of the year. And though originally a lot of scientists believed that this was probably produced by asteroids and comets, as they essentially emit a lot of dust into the interplanetary space, the more recent analysis suggested that this is actually a dust ring from Mars. And there was a lot of really strong evidence to support this argument. And so basically now we know that all of the planets seem to have them for one reason or another. The one around Earth, for example, was identified back in 1994, and the one in the orbit of Mercury was identified approximately three years ago and analyzed quite thoroughly as well. But this time, almost completely by accident, the scientists using the Parker Solar Probe, the one that we talked about sometime a few years ago that's basically the probe sent to study the Sun, and that's going to be the closest probe to the Sun in 2024, as it moves closer and closer to the Sun, orbiting in such a way where Venus actually lowers its orbital parameters every single time the probe passes in such a way where the Venus gets to lower its orbit. And so eventually in 2024, specifically in December 2024, the Parker Solar Probe is going to beat the record for, well, basically the closest distance to the Sun. It's also going to be moving extremely fast at this point, setting another record for the fastest spacecraft. But because it's called Parker Solar Probe, its main mission is of course to study the Sun and to observe the Sun and to then also study various solar emissions such as the solar wind, the emissions that we've never really seen from this particular location in the solar system. So in that sense, the main purpose of this mission is not really to study dust at all. As a matter of fact, when the scientists are trying to study the emissions coming from the Sun, they generally analyze the data by trying to cancel out all of the other interplanetary dust, mostly because it's actually extremely bright. And also because there is a tremendous amount of dust everywhere in the solar system. Which is also, by the way, one of the mysteries. We're not entirely certain what creates all of this dust. If it's comets or asteroids, there's still way too much of it. And if it's coming from planets like Mars, then there's just not enough of it. I guess in some sense it could be a bit of both, but there's no evidence right now to suggest that it's coming from one source or the other. Anyway, one of the instruments on the probe is this right here, and it's known as WHISPER. It's essentially a telescope and it stands for Wide Field Imager for Solar Probe. Here's actually the first ever picture taken by this instrument back in 2018. And its main purpose is to basically try to study the solar wind by looking at the dark patches of the night skies away from the sun. But in order to do this effectively, the scientists have to first of all cancel out all of these stars you see in the picture and also try to cancel out any kind of a dust or obviously reflections from the dust present in the picture. Normally this is done automatically and you can actually set up a filter to try to successfully take pictures without really dealing with this every time. But these settings have to be preset depending on the location of the probe. But remember how I mentioned that the probe is actually using Venus to try to lower its orbit? Well, right now the probe is doing its seventh orbit around the Sun, but back when it was doing the third orbit, it actually had to change its orientation just a little bit in order to initiate its engines so that it can pass near Venus and thus lower its orbit even more. In other words, it had to initiate a maneuver so that it can change its orbital parameters. But because of this, it also slightly changed the orientation of cameras, which then sort of invalidated the presets used for previous pictures. And so the filter wasn't actually blocking all of the dust anymore. And completely by accident, when they took a picture trying to study solar wind again, the picture was able to reveal the circumsolar dust ring located in Venusian orbit. The ring itself being this really, really thin line you see right here, this is Venus, this is Mercury, and right here we have Earth. And based on the initial calculations, 
All this suggests that the ring itself is roughly around 10% more dense compared to the general density of the interstellar dust in the region, while also being roughly around 1% brighter than the interstellar dust nearby. So it's not really that bright, but it's bright enough to be seen with a telescope. And here they were also able to calculate its total thickness. This here is roughly around 6.5 million kilometers. That's about 22 times the distance of Earth to the Moon. And that of course suggests that there's a lot of dust here. Which is by the way one of the mysteries. One of the studies that came out not so long ago suggested that the excess of dust located in this region could be maybe explained if Venus was actually sharing its orbit with several hidden asteroids. If there are asteroids here such as what we would call Trojans, similar to these Trojans located in the orbit of Jupiter, but obviously Trojans that we haven't discovered yet, this would explain why there's so much dust in the orbit of Venus. Because the only other alternative explanation here is that maybe it's emissions from Venus itself. But in this case, it's way too much. It's more than expected, and so it doesn't really explain where all of this is coming from. But because of these discoveries, now the scientists know what to look for and how to look for it. So there's definitely going to be follow-ups once they reposition the solar probe and once they're able to take more pictures. More importantly for this mission though, as the probe gets closer and closer and closer to the sun, up until 2024 when it finally makes the closest approach, the scientists expect that the probe is going to reach a zone known as the dust-free zone, something that's actually quite hypothetical, but something that is expected to exist in the region extremely close to the sun itself. The models right now predict that at some point really close to the sun, the dust is just unable to exist anymore, mostly because it evaporates or because the solar wind just sort of expels it from the area. Now discovering this region around the sun would be very important because it would definitely confirm the theories we have about the sun, and it would also confirm the theories about the interaction between the sun and the interplanetary dust. But at the same time, it would maybe help the scientists answer the question of where all of this dust is coming from. There's just a little bit too much of it to just come from meteorites and comets. And so if this dust is coming from the interstellar space, from basically outside of the solar system, that's even more exciting. That means that we can learn about the universe around us, or at least about some of the nearby stars, by capturing these particles and by studying them in more detail. And since all of this dust is also technically the building blocks of everything, planets, stars, also you and me as well, it's basically like studying the material that we're all made out of. It will help us identify how the gas is carried between the star systems and how it basically provides the environment necessary for everything in the solar system to grow and to develop. But until we discover more or until the Parker Solar Probe discovers something else amazing, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can check out all of the relevant links, including, of course, the study in the description below. And on that note, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, most importantly, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.